Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun, you're watching Israeli News Live, and we have breaking news. Ukraine is pushing NATO into war, or it may actually be something that the United States is staging all along. When I say the U.S., it could be the Obama administration that has actually got a planned plot for a Ukraine war in order to get NATO involved to get a war against Russia. Let's go right into the breaking headlines, and by the way, guys, I'm going to tell you something. You're not going to be seeing this on the U.S. news anytime soon here, what you're about to witness here. But on TASS Russian News, as well as one other Russian language source that I was able to pull this off of, says Moscow is concerned with a buildup of Ukrainian armed forces in Donbass. This was from a diplomat of the Russian, um, uh, Russian uh, government there. And this is today. This is only hours ago that this has come out. Uh, this, I, I'm assuming that the photo though is a uh, is probably one from from the file or file footage there, but uh, they are saying that they are building up a heavy number of tanks and armored personnel carriers there to enter into combat in Donbass, to launch a strike on Donbass there. Uh, not to mention, we already know the news that has been breaking about this incredible. A uh, huge military thing that's going on in Poland where all the different groups are going to be meeting in Poland uh, this month here as well. The borders have been closed down between Russia and Poland. Very tight right now. Russia closed the borders there to Poland as well as, uh, according to C24 News, the border is closed also from the Czech Republic. Not closed completely, but extreme searches are being done on every person passing in and out of through Poland uh, from even from EU states. It's just not an easy access any longer. It is. It's always been a shagan area, as we call it in Europe. A shaken area where, where, like the United States, you can travel in between states with no problem, but not so as of right now. Major concerns in Poland is this big meeting that's coming up there. But let me take you back here to TASS News here. Uh, today, they said the buildup of Ukraine armed forces in Donbass means that Kiev is preparing a military operation in the region. The Russian Foreign Ministry said on Wednesday after the meeting of Deputy Foreign Ministry uh, Gregory Karasin with accredited ambassadors of France and Germany. Now, let's take it a little further here. Pay attention to the yellow on your screen there. Same article. Ukraine armed forces and volunteer battalions at the car at the contact line. Observers from the SMM OSCE Special Monitoring Missions of the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe also noted, noted an escalation of the situation. It is clear that Ukraine forces are preparing a military operation, the ministry added. Now that's not that, that of course that's coming from uh, the foreign ministry of, of, of Russia. But the OSCE noticing this buildup of troops there, something is about to go down. Just like what we mentioned to you, our friend there from, uh, from Serbia that telling us what was going on in Estonia, from their connections there, hundreds of tanks there on the border there, ready to be launched right into St. Petersburg there, only about 50 miles distance away. All right, now let's step, step it up now. Moscow hopes that German and French partners will be able to use their influence on Kiev to prevent a military scenario that may seriously destabilize the situation in the region, the ministry concluded. That's how serious this has gotten, uh, without a doubt. Now, here's what's interesting. Let me show you the other, this article here, Poroshenko, something that TASS reported on as well a little while back now. Uh, it's been a few weeks ago, but Poroshenko says security in Donbass comes before constitutional reform. Now, the way he words it doesn't seem like he's going to be doing an escalation of violence, but that's what he's turned it into. Poroshenko says that Kiev has fulfilled its part of the Minsk agreements. Ukraine has withdrawn part of its weapons and corp corp cooperates with Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, the OSCE, again, Special Monitoring Mission, the SMM, to Ukraine, which has repeatedly stressed that Kiev is fulfilling its obligations. It said again, accusing Russia of supporting the militias of the self-proclaimed Donetsk and Luhansk uh, People's Republics and the DPR, the LPR is what they're known by as far as abbreviations. Now, this is where this is all coming down to. Uh, you're getting one side of report there, but the actions are speaking louder than words. Uh, Kiev 
is getting ready to launch a major military offensive. It's going to force Russia, like with Crimea, to protect the Russian people that live in this area. This is more than 90% Russians that live in this area. It's just like Israel. Israel, 2 million Israelis are Russian citizens as well. All right, so they're there to protect them. The same thing Putin said about Israeli citizens there. He told uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu, he said, a large part of your population are Russian citizens. He said, so your safety is our concern as well. Now, I don't throw that all the way down the football field like it's some great big thing, but nonetheless, I understand his point and agree with him to some, to some uh, extent as well. Now, this was on a Russian website. It is uh, ruspravda.info. It is in the Russian language. It's a very serious. I had to do some work on this to get this translated just right. Uh, but this is the actual, if you try to do it in Google Translate, it may not come out quite the same, but I got it brushed up to where it makes more sense for you here. It says, is U.S. going to bomb its own embassy in Kiev? Now, I brought this article up here as well. This just came out in 2016. I couldn't find the actual date. I think it's in June on this article here. But what I wanted to share with you is what the Russians are thinking about, and this is even before the buildup. They're expecting another 9-11 scenario to happen in Kiev, but on the U.S. Embassy in, in Ukraine in order to justify military intervention by the United States. Now watch what the article states here. Everyone knows that one of Washington's goals to force Russian troops into new Russia to announce it as an aggressor. But Russia does not give in to provocation. How then can it be? In the other hand, Washington needs full control over Ukraine. And for that, for this, it is necessary to introduce more troops. But while the U.S. has announced the aggressor, and how would it be in this type of situation? He says, I think the same way as it was on September the 11th of 2001. Now, let me kind of conclude in this article here so you can know where we're going at. He continues on, same article. I'll just give you two of his points. There's too much work in translating this guy's wording here because it's directly from a Russian language. It's not a propaganda site from another part of the world. This is an actually Russian language, even though they're using a dot .info uh, for their website. It's difficult to translate it. It says, what can the international community do to justify uh, for U.S. NATO troops to enter Ukraine? Now, this is his scenario, a Russian man here believing his scenario. He says, an external enemy attack on Ukraine, in this case, an attack on the United States itself by an external threat, in other words. You say the United States may attack themselves in Ukraine, and he answers back, yes, easily. The U.S. Embassy in Kiev, a territory of the United States of America. The attack on the embassy is tantamount to an attack on the country, just like we had in Benghazi, all right? The exact same scenario. And believe me, what happened in Benghazi is something that the U.S. is going to build on, on a momentum with that, especially in light of the fact that Obama is president and what happened with Secretary uh, Clinton at that time, she really got thrown, uh, well, she didn't get thrown out of the bus. She was guilty as it was. These people are crying out for help and she does nothing about it. I went on and read in this article here and come to find out, he also says that what he believes they'll do is they'll take the important personnel out of the embassy before they launch a staged attack on it. And he he said they're going to use an S-24, one of Kiev's own S-24s, Russian-made bomber there, to actually attack the embassy because it's a certain flight pattern that he speaks about in the article that would make it look as if the Russians bombed it themselves, thus would bring the U.S. in on the battlefield like never before. Russia's aware of it, friends. They know it's coming down. And guys, I'm telling you, something big could happen at any time. They want a war with Russia. Why? Because Russia, China, and India, friends, have not gone along with the New World Order. Even Iraq, I believe, has caved into that demand by the United States. They got them over the money threshold there. But Russia, China, and India, friends, they are not part of the New World Order. And that's a major threat for the Pope's global dominance. And it's about to come to a head. Friends, remember us in your support. This type of news only happens because of your help. Help us out. Go to IsraeliNewsLive.org. Thank you for those of you that are helping us. 
We've got a lot of work ahead of us, very important things going on. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.